<laughs> What's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to For the Girls. Today, we're talking about childhood trauma and how it affects your relationship. A lot. Oh, this is deep. deep. This is deep. I mean, childhood trauma affects your whole life. life. Yeah, like whole your life. life. Like, the first people you know when you come out of that uterus <laughs> are your parents. I mean, if your father is there, but definitely yeah. your mother, you know. Um, if so she's there. If she's there um, after she gave birth. I, we're going into different scenarios. Anyway. Regardless, <laughs> Dre's laughing at us. <laughs> it's it's depressing. I mean, she was yeah. there, but you know she can leave after. Yeah, which causes trauma. Like, like you know, that's... Regardless, <laughs> the first people you learn from are your parents. That's That's your model for your life. That's what you know, what you don't want to know, what you do want to be, what you don't want to be. So, I mean, when are we going to, like, start understanding that? And I wish just as a teacher, as a teacher, I wish that a lot of and I just had parent teacher conferences. I wish that a lot of parents would understand that it's probably something you're, you guys are doing, haven't done <laughs> as to why this kid is spitting on everyone or kicking <laughs> everyone or hitting everyone. You know, I didn't just get them and teach them how to spit and kick. <laughs> um, and I'm not saying you spit and kick at home, but there, there's something that is going on that could be why things are the, the way they are. Now, this, these are four-year-olds. Let's go to adults in relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Um, specifically me, when, when, when we decided on this topic, I was like, damn, what were my traumas? And there's a lot, like... My dad, with me, I just felt like I had to always be perfect. I was the older sibling, which I think caused a trauma for my little sister. She like went completely opposite because she didn't want to be me. So I am your little sister. <laughs> so yeah, I felt like I always had to be perfect. I had to handle everything. Um, my dad, I don't, I don't know if this is generational or what, but to my dad. Um, if you had any kind of fat on your stomach, he was saying something. Mm. Yeah, that was tough. Like, and it still trickles into my insecurities today. Yeah, I bet it does. Now, my husband be loving on my stomach, kissing it, all of that. But still, I'd be like, why are you grabbing that? Yeah, like, girl, you I'm know, the same way. I'm the same so, way. So, you know. Like, I'm like real weird about my husband touching my stomach. Like, you know, I'm like, no. you know, thankfully, my father's a good father. He provided financially, never abused us. In the physical sense, you know, I'm sure there was some verbal emotional, abuse, emotional yeah. abuse that we didn't realize. But um, and so but I, I say all that to say that it pops its head up all the time in our relationship. And Sean always points it out and it pisses me off more. I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm not like my father. I'm not this. He's yeah. like, but you're doing this. So, you know, I think what was the question? How do we combat the trauma or just childhood trauma and like how it shows up how it shows up it, okay it does <laughs> it, it, we answered the question show over <laughs> <laughs> no but like so for for me i realized my childhood trauma very early but in instead of dealing with it i just suppressed it right. and my the way I suppressed it was through alcohol, drugs, partying, and um, just being in an environment that was very toxic. You know, I've talked about this. I've talked about toxic CC <laughs> a lot, right? And so, but, but toxic CC is a result of me seeing my parents. So my father was not faithful to my mother um, since the beginning of their relationship. And my mother is, I mean, a beautiful soul. I mean, honestly, I call her Mother Teresa yes. because she is the so sweetest, sweet. most kind person. And so as I was growing up and becoming a, a woman, I started to see this. My, my father would bring me around his friends, and and you know and at, at first I didn't think anything of it and then you know I'm starting to piece some some shit together and then some of them would would slip up and be like oh yeah my boyfriend talking about my father I'm like that's interesting because my father's so married to my mother you know so so and then and then on the opposite end I would see my mother staying with my father um, still being 
loyal to him, not happy. I mean, miserable, de depressed, but still doing everything for this man. Mm -hmm. And that pissed me off as, as a young woman. So, so naturally, I wanted to become the opposite of both my parents. I, I did not want to become my mother. I wanted to be strong. I wanted to be independent. I wanted to be fierce. So I, I curated this masculine persona and, and into what became Toxic Cece, a very, a very uh, savage-like individual that didn't give a fuck about men and treated men how um, how I perceived yeah. men treated women. Mm -hmm. Because for me, it was like a get back to men. And so um, I that that caused me a lot of um, a lot of internal heartbreak and, and a lot a lot of issues um, in my young womanhood of, uh, you know, just I mean, you, you name it from being in bad uh bad environments, being sexually assaulted, um, you know, um, I mean, I can think of so many things. Um, being uh, involved with, with men that I shouldn't have been involved with, with like um, drug dealers and fucking party promoters who ain't shit and falling in <laughs> love with, with, with these, these niggas, you know? So it's like, so, but I didn't really deal with that or even realize what was causing me to be in these environments and continuing to pit myself in the same situations over and over again and be unhappy and empty on the inside until um, after my second heartbreak, which we talked about in an earlier episode, my, my second heartbreak where I just took, took a step back and I had to like really do some like deep diving into like, what the fuck is going on? Mm -hmm. Why am I acting like this? Because I know that when I act like this, it may make me comfortable in the moment. But when I sober up, I am empty. I am sad. I am lonely. And that's not a good feeling. So what's going on? And how can I fix it? But it's not, it wasn't a surface thing. I had to, girl, I had to peel away so many layers of shit that I didn't even know what I was suppressing. So many years of shit I saw my my parents do. Shit I saw my my mother go through. Um, me trying to encourage my mom to like divorce him and go start her own thing and her not doing that. And me being upset with her and resentful. Like I had to deal with all that. I had to unpack that. I had to forgive my parents because my parents are phenomenal parents. My parents are actually still married yeah. to this day. Mm -hmm. They've always been in my life. They always supported me. They have spoiled me rotten growing up. They were great parents, yeah. but they had a difficult union within themselves. But, but that's that, what you saw. That's what I saw. That's what you saw. Right. And so it just it pissed me off naturally. But I had to deal with that personally and and of course i i went and um when, when actually when i met my husband he's the one who encouraged me to go out and and talk to a professional right. and try to unpack it some more because i was very much against it i was always just yeah. trying to figure it out myself because yeah. i'm i was prideful yeah and um but i knew that if i didn't unpack that early on in shane and i's relationship it wouldn't have worked out. I mean, shit, y'all, I tried to run away from Shane so many times when shit got hard. I did not like conflict because my mom didn't like conflict. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? So I tried to run away from it. And then I tried to I tried to run away and go to back to something that was natural to me, which was being toxic CC and being a, a, a savage. Because cause that's just, that's what I knew, but it wasn't helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah that's a lot. It's yeah. a lot. And, and the thing that I find or that I've recognized is you have to have a desire to want to understand yourself and know why you are how you are. Otherwise, you won't grow. Yeah. And there's a lot of people out here who just think they are how they are and that's fine and no one's going to change them. And it's like you don't want to change. You don't want to be better than your parents. You don't want to be better than the things you saw growing up. You don't want someone to look at you and be like, wow, you're a phenomenal person. You really worked on yourself. You're you're great. Yeah. Um, you should want that. Yeah. But you have to personally. No one can tell tell yeah. you, hey, I think you've maybe gone through some things in your past and you should talk to somebody. You went and got help because you wanted yeah. to get help, Absolutely. not because Shane told you you should. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people struggle with actually having that desire. Like yeah. you should yeah. want to grow and be better. 
I life. think for us be like a fear. Of like say, I think they're it. fearful mm-hmm. of facing the reality because doing the hard work is difficult. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is extremely difficult. You're going to cry a lot. You're going to be very emotional. You might get a little bit depressed. It's be- mentally, mentally, a lot. it's a lot. Yeah. And and to I think that the hardest muscle to um to to work on is your mind. Mm-hmm. It's it's. Honestly, it's the hardest thing to, to control. Yeah. And so trying to de- to dive deep into doing that internal work that's necessary is difficult. And a lot of people don't want to do the hard yeah. work. Yeah. yeah. I think hearing stories, though, of, of people who've been on the other side, like what comes after you put in the work definitely helps encourage mm-hmm. people. Um, but I will say, I think it takes hitting rock bottom. I think the oh, moment yeah. that somebody is at Absolutely. their wits end and they're just like, they've lost hope, they just feel so broken, that that's when it's a lot easier to put the work in because what else are you going to do? Just keep going through life feeling this way and, and just not caring about finding a solution. Mm-hmm. I know for me, one of the biggest things was I never knew that any of my past really affected me because I think I did a good job of like hiding it because I was always getting awards and, you know, reaching my goals. And I was the person that everyone saw as like the golden child who just does everything right and is perfect. And I worked so, so hard to be so perfect and never really understood why. And it took not even just dating Dre, it took being married to Dre. I didn't figure out so the recently. situation. Mm hmm. Until we were married because I started to put these real random, like unrealistic expectations on him. And I'm like, this man is so great to me. So kind, so good of a person. Why am I giving him crap for things that really don't matter? And I could not understand it at the time I was in therapy. And I told my therapist about this and I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like, why am I nitpicking? Why am I making something out of nothing? And I had to do a lot of work. I had to first do a trauma timeline. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is that? Yeah. And it was going through every part of your life and remembering anything that that either happened that was really great or anything that happened that was really bad. And what a lot of people don't understand is trauma isn't just bad stuff and that's what makes it even crazier Mm. because i realized the all of the moments where i was very successful there was something way deeper under there that really was my motivation for that success and i didn't realize that i was working this hard and doing this and that because i was trying to prove somebody wrong or i was trying to say aha i'm not a piece of crap like Mm -hmm. you know so Mm -hmm. when Mm -hmm. i went through that trauma timeline what i realized is i actually suppressed a lot of the bad things but i remember all of my my wins but each win was tied to something bad. bad and when I really dug deep it hurt I was frustrated I was annoyed I kind of wanted to stop yes. I even had to talk to my mom about it and ask her like do you remember specific things that maybe I was too young to remember that could have affected me or affected you to in return be a way to me that would make me you know and she told me a couple of things I was like huh I didn't even think of like that and the main thing that I learned is that your parents are either going to make you just like them or completely opposite of them. And either way, you still have work to do because even if your parents were great and you turn out just like them, they aren't perfect. You're not perfect. But even worse, if you had rough parents and maybe not the best upbringing and you're doing the best that you possibly can, you might get in a relationship with someone and they bring out some things in you that you're like, what is going on? And that person did nothing except expose something that you weren't aware already lived deep in you because it was rooted in you. Right. So. So I think it's so important for if you are in a relationship and you want to be with this person, y'all both have to do the work to dig deep and understand that there's not always going to be things to go to therapy about. There's not always going to be these big issues you have to unpack. But when it does come, your partner and your person is supposed to support you through that. And having that conversation with Dre was tough for me to basically be like, oh, so you know how you thought you knew everything about me? Well, here's some more baggage to add. Mm-hmm. And and this is why I'm doing X, Y, and Z. And it was coming out of nowhere. It wasn't something he's dealt with, like our whole relationship. It just sprung out because insecurities in me that stemmed from what I saw in my mom and her relationships and even my past relationships. Once I got married, some different expectations started to creep up and I started to internalize Dre and like compare him to my non-existent father, mm. which is so unfair because they are yeah. completely 
completely opposite from each other and i was just wanting dre to show me and and like to mess up and to be like not Mm -hmm. his great person like Mm -hmm. not his great self Mm -hmm. so anything that i could find for him to fail at would have made me feel better because Mm -hmm. i would have felt closer to what is my norm and it's a rare situation where you find somebody who makes you feel like your norm is not normal that's an uncomfortable feeling oh girl uncomfortable about it but (laughs) you gotta get uncomfortable you you know even successful people always talk about the moment that they that pivotal moment that really got them to where they were was because they got uncomfortable yeah yeah i mean and i was gonna piggyback for me, I don't think I realized a lot of my childhood traumas till I did therapy as mm-hmm. well. And who forced me to go to therapy? Sean. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, and same with him. He had some shit he was unpeeling over there too. But for me, this is for the girls. <laughs> for me, um, the main issue we went to therapy is when we get into, because we we always get along so well, but when we get, when, when we used to get in arguments, they would go on for hours and it just seemed like no resolve, no resolve. Um, and Sean pointed out that I was always very defensive. I wouldn't listen to him. Um, I wouldn't trust his word. And I would bring it up to the therapist. I'd be like, yeah, he said this, he said that. And she was listening. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. And she was like, hmm, so tell me about your dad. That was the <laughs> first thing she said. I was oh, like, okay. okay. Um, well, he's this, he's that, you know, my mom, he's like, well, tell me about how they would handle problems. And I was like, well, I would never see them. Mm. You know, I would hear it, but I would never see them. She said, hmm, interesting. Um, tell me about how your mom, you know, would deal with your dad being alpha male, felt like he was always right. It's like, she wouldn't. And she was like, hmm. And how do you feel about that? I'm like, I hated it. Like, I hated it. So she's like, do you realize you have a bit of a man-hating complex? I I do too. I do too. I was like, no, I don't hate men. I I, I love black men. Black men, they're they're our kings. I love them. She's like, yeah, but you don't trust yours. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh Mm. that's deep (laughs) you don't trust yours she was like so let's just she's like just 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 dive into that like i really want you to think about that like you explained to me that all of your sisters get real irritated by your father you hate how he talks to your mother you hate how your mother just sits there and takes it and you hate how they would get in arguments and you would never see them apologize to each other like all that crap really pisses you off Mm -hmm. she was like that's a trauma you saw all this stuff you saw how it's handled so you have a man hating complex and you're giving it towards your husband Mm -hmm. and i'm like oh man and so when i said that to him of course he's like i was right he's like i knew it i was right (laughs) no no no. money well spent (laughs) he was like that explains so much you You know know what though i'm so glad that you (sighs) mentioned you said um the apologizing thing because Mm -hmm. we just had a couple's like road trip and on the trip angela was mentioning how when her and sean go through something they make sure to apologize to each other in front of their daughter even if we already apologize um, we'll make it a point like our most recent mm -hmm. argument what the hell were we arguing about Oh, I wanted the cars detailed. He said no because it was five hundred dollars. Ah, honey, where was But I had a going? whole other response to it. But it was a whole thing in yeah. front of Alina, and she was like, "You're mad, mommy's mad, oh. daddy's mad." And then she took a nap, and then we like made up. We talked it through. He he gave me his piece. I gave him my piece. We met in the middle, like we've trained ourselves to do over mm-hmm. the years. And then she gets up. And then I walk her down the stairs. I'm like, Alina's up. So Sean says, I'm sorry to mommy for um, getting upset with mommy. And I said, I'm sorry to daddy for getting upset. And she said, I'm sorry. Aww. But the thing is, she. the thing is, I never heard my dad say sorry. He still doesn't. Yeah. No, same. My, <laughs> my, dad, so, my dad never said sorry either. But now, Alina just threw a thermometer across the floor this morning and it cracked open. And I said, Alina, why would you throw that? That wasn't a good decision. She said, I'm sorry, mommy, for cracking it. Mm -hmm. Like, I was never an apologizer. And like, I'm forcing myself to do it. I'm just hoping, I'm not saying my daughter's gonna be perfect. And I'm not gonna say that we don't give her traumas as well. Mm -hmm. But 
she will at least know how to apologize. Yeah, and, and that was that, always was an issue for me and Sean. I know out of the three of us, I'm not the the mom out of the group yet. Um, but one thing that I always think of oddly is like my kids, and I always told Dre one of the reasons why our wedding date was so important to me, and why people didn't understand like why we were continuing to wait because of COVID. They're like, just go get married and then have this ceremony later. And I was like, no, like I, it means something to me because for me, I had a personal goal of getting in a space where I felt worthy of being a wife and a soon to be mother because for me marriage meant a start of our family our yeah. traditions our life together and I never wanted to go into having a family of my own where I pull and bring out the ugly parts of me yeah. in a way that is presented as normal because yeah. it's not normal yeah. and when we have kids right there's both the, the father and the mother who have these past traumas who have been raised differently and you have to together as a team work on how are we going to decide to raise our right. child and yes no one's going to be perfect but I knew personally the things that I absolutely did not want to do mm -hmm. and the things that I did want to do and even something as simple as cursing which I still do but I don't like I want mm -hmm. to stop cursing because when I'm in front of my god babies or my own children I don't want them to hear that and think it's normal and be in a classroom <laughs> Like some some kids I know calling We're parents that. We're bad at and that. teachers bitches and stuff say, like that. Me and Shane definitely still alive. Sean go, oh shit. Alina goes, oh shit. I'm like, <laughs> and no, and it's like it's it personally for me. I'm like that, no, that matters. I'm because about to take the that reason one why. Let me let me tell you why that matters so much. Because now, literally today, Dre and I had a misunderstanding about something that was very small and simple. Like I took the car when he was expecting to have the car, and I didn't get back. Back in time and he was late and because I made him late I was so mad that I gave my anger at him when it's like how you gonna be mad at him you the one that made him late <laughs> and when I got out the car I slammed the door and I'm walking across the street and I yelled shut the f up Dre like when I walked from away from the car and I was like oh I immediately called Tori and I was like, I have anger issues still. Like I thought I got better, but like I just, I, we're in it's Tyson's not. corner and I'm like, shut the fuck up, Dre, like getting out of the car. And he like, he can't even hear me at this point. I said it out of frustration for me to feel better. And the moment that I even thought that he heard me say that, I felt so terrible. But the reason why that comes out of me is because I grew up in a space where adults cursed like it was the first Water. language mm -hmm. and it was kids curse and everyone curse and when you're mad and angry you throw things you break things you punch right. people that is hard to unlearn yeah. and I was in a space where I was kind of forced with like okay I'm going into this new chapter and how well do I feel that I have evolved and changed and grown because I do not want to be in a position where I have this little newborn baby yeah. and because I'm angry I throw something or break something and possibly hurt this yeah. this this innocent child yeah. because I don't got my stuff exactly. in order yeah. and stuff like that the little things that that become a norm as an adult is so hard to break and it's so detrimental to relationships. Oh, absolutely. You know what's sad is a lot of um, men think that um, they're the way they are because, you know, their parents are this or like, I'm a player because my, my, my daddy was this, you know, da, 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 it's in my genes. Or, you know, a lot of people will write off someone who did something horrible. <sighs> It's, she's a he's a product of his environment, you know, mm -hmm. and you know how you said that some people either become exactly like their parents or opposite. Um, I had to commend my husband because he he definitely he has shot hard at the goal of being opposite mm -hmm. of what he saw growing up, which was constant abuse, <laughs> cheating, financial issues like physical verbal abuse it, it he just wanted to be completely opposite of that mm -hmm. and sometimes i forget that that's what he saw yeah growing up yeah. now on the other side you know he has a brother who you know took after the other route yeah well you know i'm so so shane actually gave me the same kudos because Recently, we went on a family vacation because my brother got married. So, yay, we, brother. Yay, Congratulations. <laughs> um, which that was my brother because he's also one of like an amazing man, an amazing man to his now wife. He's still 
he's kind and sweet and just a, he's fun he's got he's fun he's gonna be a beautiful husband to her oh my God. and so i'm so excited for them i'm i'm excited for both my brother and i that we y'all are both we didn't turn out more like fucked a, yeah. up than i think we could have right. and yeah <laughs> and and my and my husband actually said that to to me because this was his first time being around all of my family on vacation mm -hmm. for oh. for 11 days straight right Ooh. so so you learn the real person on vacation the real dynamics of, a, of someone's family on a vacation mm -hmm. and you know my parents have definitely grown from what they used to be however my dad very similar to your dad is still very much so a dominant I mean, yeah. Alpha male. I just feel like uh, a southern black maybe male. Maybe generational. Yeah, who, that's who, exactly my who, dad. Southern who, black male. Who tries to who talks kind of crazy to his wife like my 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 man would never be able to talk to me like that. Right. But first of all, he already knows like I'm not rocking like yeah. that. Yeah. So, so Shane seeing this dynamic of my family, he actually like said to me in, in private, he's like, "Baby, I just want to let you know, I'm very proud of you. Oh, for, for, thank you, Shane. For how you turned out, because you could have turned out way worse right. than, than, than right. you actually did. Andre says that every time we get <laughs> you, back from the board. You, you know, it's like so. So you know, I I I really hope that a lot of the women out there listening who may still have some daddy issues or some other traumas that in their life maybe it wasn't a daddy, maybe it was an uncle or a mother or or an ex or just whatever environment they were in that caused them some traumas. You know, I, I really hope and challenge them to, to really try to change that narrative in mm -hmm. their next chapter in, in their life. Because it, it is it is possible. And like, people do and it. And it, it takes hard work. And and I also, um, as, as you were, am still working through this. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a, a woman who who doesn't care for men. Yeah. I, I she really, called it a man-hating complex. I have a I man- like, no. I have a man-hating complex. And my husband actually, he knows it. And he knows that like, he is one of like, maybe the very few men that I actually love and, and tolerate. Um, but but I, I want to continue to work on that myself because in the event that my husband and I do decide to have another child and we have a son, yeah. I don't want to harbor some type of resentment right. to my son because, wanna, because because I have a man hating complex because you I want to raise him right. I didn't because I didn't deal with my traumas. Yeah. I want to be the best boy mom to my son possible that I can be. But that's going to require me to do the hard work in advance of yeah. the, of him coming into this world. Right. Yep. You know? So so I know I still have work to do, y'all. I mean, even in my my relationship currently, there's there's things that bubble up where I'm like, "Fuck. That's because of this." Yeah. And and I don't like that. I don't like how my husband feels because I'm acting this way or because I'm doing this or lack thereof. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to work on this. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I have to take ownership. I have to take accountability yeah. over myself and my actions. Because yeah. mm -hmm. at the end of the day, no one's coming to save me but me. Yeah. So if I want better, I have to do it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Amen to that. So, so, yes. 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 And then, I mean... <laughs> It's all about pat what what is it? We're we're passing we're trying to stop generational curses that mm -hmm. have been passed down from generation to generation. Everybody sitting here is a woman, mm -hmm. a B of color. Yeah. <laughs> so the curses add up. <laughs> like you're a woman A, B. Yeah. You're 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 a woman of color. And we all come from from different races, mm -hmm. right? Like we all have one common race, yes, being black. But aside from that, you know, our our second, third race, second and third race, yeah. it, they're all different, right. right? And so I think that a lot of traumas also come with that. Exactly. Like having a Filipino mom mm -hmm. is is I'm sure different from having a Mexican mom, for, mm -hmm. and that's different from having a white mom, right? Yeah. You know, so. It's and I'm glad you brought up moms because this is the last thing that I want to mention because I think it's really important and it's also something I obviously have experience with. But I think sometimes we get traumas 
in the idea of like it's something that we seen like a man do or something that right. someone did to us or something too. bad that happened and sometimes the traumas or the learned behaviors that come across negatively in your relationship right. can come from having a really great mom yeah, yeah too great of a mom that just someone who did everything Everything for for you you. someone that worked really hard was very independent very loving and patient and kind to you and then you go and get into a relationship and because you feel that you also are strong and independent you can Mm -hmm. do everything on your own and and you deserve this and you like put yourself on this pedestal then like a normal man who just wants to treat you right all of a sudden could be bashed for being a good guy yeah. because all of a sudden I don't need you. Like, yeah. you know, on the other side, yeah, girl. the mom who did everything for her son, mm-hmm. oh. <laughs> that he'll never find a good enough a woman. Good enough. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. one who gave him everything yeah. he needed because he didn't have the dad. Or mm-hmm. like, he's still relying. He's a 30 something year old grown ass man still relying on his mama to do yeah. certain things. It's like, Oh, God. Yeah. So I and mean, yeah, that's a tr- that's a learned. I trauma say as that well. to say, or to make sure that people watching aren't looking at their traumas and thinking that it's just bad things that happen to you. Yeah. Trauma is just something that happened in the past. That when something happens in the future to trigger an emotion, the trauma connected to that that act, that behavior, that habit, that that normalcy it bubbles up in in the current day, whatever your dating relationship, you know, marriage, it will show its ugly head. And sometimes you don't know where it's stemming from or why. Yeah. And it can be from something that was very positive in your childhood that you just never understood how it affected you. Yeah. So everybody has traumas. Yeah. They look different based on person to person. But um, I think we all are in agreement that we want to encourage you to do the work and, and be a better, be better for the next generation. Yeah. Cause yeah. I'm like I said, I'm almost positive. Sean and I are going to pass down some traumas to Lena and you and Shane yeah. will pass them it's down to Capri, inevitable. but you're some just, new traumas that she develops. Right. You know? mm-hmm. But the goal is to break <laughs> some of those traumas before I want her to be able to apologize to her, her spouse. I want her to be able to have a healthy argument with her spouse i want her to know that there should be love in a house you know i i I was just so used to seeing my mom cooking and cleaning and doing all the things and working without help because that's what she thought she was supposed to do apparently filipino moms and mexican moms are actually same (laughs) (laughs) i want alina to know that when she has a kid because she saw her dad helping all the time that's what she expects out of him. Absolutely. Man. Like mm-hmm. that's that's what it, it needs to be. It needs, yeah. yeah. It can't be anything else moving forward. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. I love it. Oh, well, I'm so proud of you guys, you moms, <laughs> for breaking curses and being amazing. And cheers to your husbands. Yes. But let's cheers to breaking <laughs> Susie has I know. nothing left. And she laugh here, girl. Her take, usual. take a little take a little show. Yeah. There you go. (laughs) Let's cheers to breaking generational curses, being aware of our traumas, and working and growing through being better. Amen. Cheers. 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 Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Make sure you follow us at Relationship Restored. Comment, like, subscribe. Let us know what topics you want to hear from. And until next time, we out.